I came across an interview from a little while ago that an individual right-wing commentator named Benny Johnson did with a bunch of what he referred to as the based caucus uh, or a bunch of the hardcore mega people. And one of them in the interview was Marjorie Green. So we'll focus in on the moments from her that I want to take a look at Josiah. But strangest interview, if you want to torture yourself to go listen to the whole hour as I was doing to pick out these moments. Um, but I don't know if there's much I can say to introduce this. So let's just dive in to this moment. And I think the American people are hungry for them. Um, but many of them have already been seen. Tucker Carlson did a great job highlighting them. Julie Kelly did a great job. John Solomon, many others have highlighted these tapes. Now the blaze will do the same thing. Um, but I, I completely agree. We need to have no fear of January 6th because many of these people did nothing wrong. They walked into the Capitol uh, and that's all they did. And they shouldn't be persecuted like they are. We should fight back against this narrative. We can say the election is stolen all we want to. There's nothing wrong with it because I do believe the election was stolen. I do believe Donald Trump won in 2020. And I don't care how mad and angry the left is and the media and whoever wants to make fun of me for saying that or anyone saying that elections are extremely important. And, and you know, Troy Nels is absolutely right. Donald Trump is being persecuted because he's winning and they are going to do everything they can to stop him in 2024. And they're going to do everything they can to steal it again, Benny. And we should be talking about that because they are going to try to stop him, whether it's Colorado, Minnesota, Georgia, my own state, any state where they can take his name off the ballot or they can uh, use the systems with the absentee ballots. There's nothing wrong with talking about that because the absentee ballots are ripe for fraud and many states did not change their laws from 2020. And these are the things that matter to us. And, and, and Greg Stubbe's right. Troy Nels is right. If we don't have the White House, we can do nothing. But still at the same time, it is our job as elected Republicans to fight as hard as possible in our capacity and pressure other Republicans to stand up and be courageous because these are trying times. These are perilous times and we're losing our country. So obviously super dangerous. You've heard this now from lots of right wingers. The next election is now going to be stolen. They're already saying it just like how Trump before the 2020 election said it before every election he's been in. He said, I won't accept it necessarily if I feel it was unfair. And so you can already imagine the second that it looks like Biden's going to win. Um, which hopefully will play out. It's going to be an explosion of conspiracy theories. It's going to be 2020 all over again, but next level. And I'm not looking forward to that. No, I, I, I would say I appreciate how gracious Marjorie Taylor Greene was saying that she doesn't care if those on the left and those in the media make fun of her because I do and shall continue to. Thank you, Marge. Appreciate it. But yeah, the fact of the matter is that the Republican Party will never accept an election outcome in which they do not win. Period. Full stop. Infinitely worse on the Republican side by far than the Democratic side. Donald Trump refused to commit to the results of the election in 2016, people tend to forget that because he won, lost the popular vote, by the way, even as unpopular as Secretary Clinton was, she is more popular than Donald Trump. He refused to commit to the results of the election and the peaceful transfer of power in 2020, then broke both. And it's the same thing here. If he is asked next year, hey, will you commit to the election outcomes? He won't do it. It's, you know, it's heads I win, tails you lose, that sort of thing. That's it. They can't conceive or refuse to acknowledge a any timeline in the multiverse in which they don't win the election. And you know that, Luke, because going back to 2020, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene over here is complaining about absentee ballots. They're rife for abuse. Meanwhile, they never prove statistically significant abuse and uh, for fraud. And by the way, when we do have instances of it being committed, it's very often by Republicans. That's awkward. Mm. You guys have no credibility on that score, less credibility than Democrats. And also, by the way, you have no problem counting absentee ballots and mail-in ballots on the down-ballot races. That was the other funny thing, Luke. You get this ballot, it's either delivered in person or absentee, 
they're fine with every Republican who won the down ballot races. It's just the one at the top. That's where the fraud is. Mm. It's one of those like selective fraud ballots, Luke, where the fraud's only at the top. And I, I, you listen, just you don't understand, Luke. It's like it's a really insidious form of fraud. Biden These coordinated it all while hiding all the evidence of his own criminal enterprise and also he doesn't know where he is um yes you mentioned yes. 2016 i think we also forget that trump after he won in 2016 started saying it was stolen the popular vote was from him and said that it was millions of undocumented immigrants that got counted and that's why he lost the popular vote and then he commissioned someone to look into it and obviously there was no evidence of that he's such a sore loser that he's a sore winner it's crazy he is the inauguration crowds luke remember he's like yeah and they put the they put the pictures side by side i had i had 70 kabillion people at my inaugural rally four gazillion times more than obama had he is it's so pathetic and 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 i this is something again i emphasize on my channel that needs to be made fun of relentlessly we should have you shouldn't take this seriously at all you shouldn't entertain it it's dangerous i want to be clear yeah. about this what she's espousing is dangerous so take it seriously in that respect but her views on this especially three years later they don't deserve respect folks they really don't it's pure conspiracy theory and it's dangerous to this country and i do think it has to be called out as with trump and as that sort of sore loser uh cry baby energy because one thing especially with trump reportedly he hates more than anything is being, being called weak or a coward and and so i think reminding people that reportedly there were times where people heard him say, you know, defeated, uh, hunched over. I can't believe I lost to that guy. And then because he's such a snowflake, he made this entire conspiracy theory and built a whole universe for, for all of his followers to live in. So none of them would have to accept something that hurt to accept. But if you're an adult and if you care about democracy, you go, ah, oh, that is a bummer just like how it was horrible when Trump won in 2016, but you have to be able to accept it and you can't just create a whole world in which that didn't happen. Um, also, one thing I'll say before throwing it back over to you and more to look at from this interview, but the, I don't care what people say, I believe the election was stolen. I believe the election was stolen. The way she said that sounded so much like a bunch of the Trump supporters I've talked to um, who after I do the whole list of facts, well, every court case, investigation, recon, audit, and debunk the claims they're making. Oh yeah, that particular video you saw, that's because they were saying this and that's actually, blah, blah, blah. they resort to, I don't know, I just believe it was. And it's the emphasis on a belief system that's more supernatural than it is empirical as it relates to Trump. Trump has become that sort of religious uh putting your belief as the first thing sort of phenomenon and it's disturbing he's a he is a deity to them he really is i mean we actually know that to be the case because not only do you have we we have anecdotal evidence from your recorded interviews we've seen it in action but we also have polling which from which we can extrapolate people think republicans think that trump is more trustworthy mm than their family, than their religious leaders, than longtime conservative political leaders. It is a cult. And I understand that some people have hesitated over the years to use that phrase, but it is. You actually have cult experts, social psychologists, uh, sociologists, people as well, who's like, no, 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 it meets the check marks all the way through for a cult. And again, you, you said something about, you know, how Trump hates being characterized as a loser. That's why my hope as we head into the next year and the Democrats ramp up the messaging campaign against Donald Trump, I hope they push that button relentlessly. You know how Donald Trump brand, crooked Joe Biden, crooked Hillary, lying Ted, it should be loser Donald, loser Donnie, loser Trump, loser, loser, loser. Make it his first and last name. Make it loser Trump, loser, you know? 
it needs to be a thing. That needs to be in his head all the time. Anytime he hears about himself, sees it, because you, the, I'll say this, you know Trump obsessively watches not just flattering things about him, but he keeps an eye on unflattering, like he can't help himself. You know, he's constantly monitoring people who say bad things about him. So that's the, the word that should be used constantly with Donald Trump from Democrats and everybody else. Loser, because that's exactly what he is. Mm. Uh, next clip. We have checks, literally checks, $200,000, $40,000 written to Joe Biden from his brother, Jim Biden. They are the crime family. They're the Biden crime family. They are so corrupt. Our Department of Justice needs to go after them. And even the wires that uses his personal address as the verification for where the wire should be sent to. Because that's just money laundering, right? Because then you report that you've got a loan payment, you don't pay taxes on that. Like low level. Well, but think about it. It yeah. was a four hundred thousand dollar yeah. payment to Hunter, of which it just so happens forty thousand dollar check goes to Joe Biden. That sounds like ten percent for the big guy. That's a perfect ten percent for the big guy. It's like actually the math, math the math yeah, works perfectly. It's ten percent. So that so who would be Attorney General? The videos we're recording will be released on different days, but the theme for today's recording day is I'm just tired. I'm tired of the nonsense and then take it all so seriously and I sit and I say, okay, audience, you know, let's walk through why what they're saying is not accurate and no, he wasn't bribed and that was just a loan repayment. How <laughs> that could possibly be suspicious. Oh, and James Comer did the exact same thing with his brother. But I'm tired of it. It doesn't matter. It does matter because I'm happy that, like I said, my audience knows better. But uh, it doesn't matter for those individuals. I recorded it recently and it'll come out sometime during the break, another episode of Mocha's with MAGA, which is the docuseries where I sit down with Trump supporters and have conversations over coffee. This time there was actually no coffee, but you know, that's the idea. And uh, I got on this subject with a guy and it just made me so sad to sit with somebody and be able to explain exactly why the Victor Shokin thing was not proof of corruption, you know, Biden pushing for the firing. I'm not going through that again reference all my past videos i won't do it <laughs> reviews um <laughs> you're, you're speaking of someone who's had trauma you can't make me yeah. do it again i'm not gonna cover it again <laughs> i'm not going to stop i know you're bringing that up i'm not going to um but the <laughs> point is in summary it's not proof what they say it is and uh like at all it's like the opposite um Biden was just doing the thing he should do as vp now i'm gonna explain it again no um and i explained it he was kind of shouting over me the whole time and then at the end, he goes something like, gosh, you just don't want to talk about Biden's corruption. And I was like, we spent like 10 minutes talking about it. And I explained to you. And he was like, he's one of the most corrupt presidents or whatever. And then that did lead to him saying there's a two tier justice system, a two tier justice system, a two tier justice system until the end. He just kept shouting that and then left and stormed out. It was very cr crazy. But I'm just tired of that. And that breaks my heart to know that people are so deep i know this is long i apologize josiah they're plugged no, man. in hey, you're preaching get it off your chest <laughs> thank you this is just therapy <laughs> for me they're so deep in that rabbit hole that i can't pull them out of it even if they're there we have time we have all the time in the world i can explain exactly specifically what that forty thousand dollar payment was it was lowering payment or whatever and it doesn't matter <sighs> breaks my heart yeah, so it's uh, it's maddening. I, I say that as somebody who, um, and I can't speak for you or anybody else, but I will tell you, uh, I have people who I consider to be part of the MAGA cult in my family. I have friends who are part of the MAGA cult, and and it has strained certain aspects of our uh, relationship. I, I'm happy to say they're mostly successful, but like I know it, this is extremely challenging spiritually, mentally, psychologically. It really is. Uh, so you, you, I, I'm with you on that. Now, my, I guess my only question is, what's the Victor Shokin thing? <laughs> no, no. No, 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 but, but no. <laughs> listen, no, no, but, but no, to your point, this is what I mean. And, and, and honestly, I think even like David Pakman's talked about this too, when he's in, when, when they've talked about like deprogramming and you and I've talked about it, it takes extraordinary effort and manpower and numbers to deprogram somebody from a cult. Like, I don't, can't remember the exact ratio, but it involves like 
an like extraordinary time, isolation, constant pressure from family members and friends and loved ones. Like it's a disproportionate amount of everything to get one person to leave a cult. And it's not like it has a hundred percent success rate even in the first place. So you can throw all that time, effort, and manpower and trying to deprogram somebody. And at the end of the day, they still may, you know, stay with it. And so think about that. We're talking about tens of millions of people. <sighs> this is the problem. We don't have the opportunity to, to deprogram people. Um, that's why it's even more imperative to beat Donald Trump and to make it clear. And this, this is, and again, I'm speaking to your audience who I'm sure if they're eligible voters, they will probably go out and vote for President Biden or whoever the Democratic nominee is um, over the Republican. But the point is this, every eligible voter, in my opinion, folks, this is, this is what we have to stop. Regardless of where you fall on certain policy positions, we have to save the country from a cult, a dangerous cult, a cult that radically reshapes reality that has no limiting principle. And even those who know better within the Republican Party, Luke, as we've talked about, those who are like, oh, my God, this is insane. They are too cowardly to put a stop to it. We saw it with Kevin McCarthy, with Mitch McConnell, with whatever. They just like, ah, maybe it'll, it'll solve itself. And it's not going to at least not as long as Donald Trump remains a viable political candidate. So what we have to do is show the Republican Party, if you keep the MAGA strain, if that's what animates you, you will lose every major election again and again and again. They didn't perform well in the 2022 midterms. They got shellacked in the 2023 off-year elections. They lost the White House and the Senate in 2020. We have to keep – that's the only way we're going to make progress. Beat them again and again and again and again and again until they have a paradigm shift within themselves. And like, you know what? Maybe we need to revisit what our platform is and become – transition rather from – an authoritarian cult back to a conservative loyal opposition. This is the only way beating them in every election we possibly can. That's it. it it's sad because I, I do want to believe it feels more fun to be like, no, the way we're going to fix this is to convince everybody to not be crazy. There are people who we need to activate in the middle and on the left. Some moderate Republicans we can get to winning is the solution to the rest. Um, Josiah, plug your channel. Yeah, so listen, if you are excited about Democrats winning, if you want Democrats to continue to coalition build and play ruthlessly to meet the moment, uh, you can find me at youtube.com slash at pondering politics because that's basically all we talk about. And I appreciate the invitation, Luke.